Hey, what's up? Simon3D here. Today I want to show you how to make this flying petal stray effect in Blender. Recently I've watched Kung Fu Panda and I just thought it would be really cool to make something like that myself. As always, this effect is fully procedural, so you can control the trail that the petals are flying over, as well as a couple other things. And also this scene, as always, is available on my Gumroad, so if you don't feel like following the tutorial and you just want the effect, then you can get it on my Gumroad for free, uh, link in the description. And if you think that this looks cool and you would like to see more content like that, then maybe consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's just jump into fresh scene in Blender. Here, let's start with a simple UV sphere that is gonna be our single particle. Right click, shade smooth, and we can also move it aside already and create a plane that is gonna be our particle emitter. So on the right, in the particle properties, simply click this plus button to add a particle system. Remember to name stuff accordingly to not get confused later. And if you click play, then you should already see some particles spawning. Now, first of all, let's go to the scene settings and turn off the gravity so that our particles won't be falling down, but rather flow upwards in the air. Then the next thing that we want to do is Make sure that the particles are always spawning and they don't have this, this break in the middle. So in the particle settings, choose the frame start to be something like minus 100, the lifetime of particles set to 100 as well, and then the end frame where the particles stop spawning, you can set it to 250 or whatever your animation length is. Just to make sure that at any given frame of animation we always have some particles to work with. Now scroll down a little bit to render and then change from render as from halo to object and the object you can either choose here from the list is gonna be our sphere that we created first or you can also click this eyedrop button and choose the sphere like that here make sure that the scale is set to one so that we have a full scaled sphere and also you can bump in the scale randomness a little bit just to give it some variation maybe like 0.5 now with this done we can also lower the number of particles spawned right now it's set to a thousand but we can bring it to something more reasonable like uh, 200 maybe. And with that basic particle system set up, we can jump right into the shader editor with the sphere selected to create our material. So let's drag in new viewport right here and change it to shader editor. Then click new to create new material and you can delete the principled BSDF. Now let's add a emission and transparent BSDF as well as mix shader node and connect it like so. Make sure that the transparent is on top and the emission is not on the bottom because later when we create the mask to drive the factor we want the black areas to be invisible and the white to be visible. Now the shader is fairly simple compared to what you can find on this channel. So let's start with a noise texture. Now if you have a node wrangler enabled simply click ctrl T. If you don't then I recommend you go to edit preferences add-ons and look for it because this add-on is gonna help us a lot so make sure that it's enabled it should be in blender by default and now here in texture coordinates make sure that you take it from object and not generated and we can create additional node called value node that will go to our scale it's just to get one value to drive the scale instead of three now in order to preview what we're actually doing in this viewport let's switch to a rendered view and here in our shader editor Simply hold down Ctrl, Shift and click with left mouse button on the noise texture to have a preview of what this does. As you can see we already have some noise and we just need to refine it a little bit. So let's move those nodes a little bit to the left and add a color ramp right after the noise texture. And this is gonna be our mask. So let's bring this dark value quite high, maybe like here. Change the scale in the noise texture from 5 to something like 2 maybe. Now if your sphere is all black then you can just adjust these values in the color ramp to get some small white spots on it. If there's not many of them then don't worry about it because as we will switch through seed of this noise texture we'll have the illusion of petals appearing and disappearing constantly. Now let's give it this light shade of pink. So duplicate this color ramp and connect it to the noise texture as well and here you can bring down the black values quite a bit and the white you can switch to pink. Now in order to see what we're doing, connect the color from the color ramp to the emission color and the black and white color ramp to mix shader factor. This is gonna act as the mask that will tell the shader which areas should be transparent and which should be visible. Now we can preview the mix shader and as you can see the petal is pink and the rest is black. In order to change the black to transparent you have to go into the material properties and change the blend mode from opaque 
to alpha blend. Now you should have something similar to this. Now to give it a little bit of bloom you can bump up the strength of the emission, maybe something like 10. And also go to the render settings and turn on bloom to get this nice glow. Now if we zoom out a little bit and go to our particles, you can see that you can see that the tiling is very obvious and they are quite static. So in order to fix that, let's move to our noise texture, change it from 3D to 4D and add a object info as well as a value node and a math node. Now connect object info random to one slot and the value to another. And then the result of the math node to this W value, which is the seed of our noise texture. As you can see, we already have some sort of randomness and variation in our particles, but they are still very static and boring. So first of all, we will phase through the seed value to make those particles slowly appear and disappear. Simply type in hashtag frame divided by let's say 150. This will change this value based on the animation frame that is currently on. This already looks much better. For making these pedals a little bit more round and less rugged, you can bring down the roughness all the way down and then further adjust the mask. Maybe something like this. Now to give it another layer of motion, we can also put a driver to rotation X. So type in frame divided by 15 and as you can see that they are not only phasing through seeds but also rotating on their own axis. As you can see it got, it got better but still there is some tiling to be seen. So the ultimate fix will be with our particle system. So select our particle system, go to the particle properties and scroll down to the rotation tab. Make sure that it's checked, open it up, change the orientation axis to normal and bump the randomize all the way up to one. Now as you can see the petals look completely random and the effect is basically almost done. Depending on what you're going for, you can right now scale up the plane change the number of particles to something higher like 1500 and you will already have sort of field of particles raising from a surface which I think gives really really nice this fantasy effect but in order for these particles to follow a trail we'll need one final step so first of all let's go back and scale down our plane and add a Bezier curve and in the physics tab, I believe that's what it's called, it's under the modifier tab, choose the force field and change the type from force to curve guide. As you can see that the particles already changed their movements. So with the curve still selected, click tab to get into the edit mode. And now as you manipulate the points of the Bezier curve, you can see that the particles follow the path that you create with your curve. And the great thing is that you can extrude it you can scale it up to make it more smooth. But what's also cool, you can click Ctrl T and then as you twist it, you can see that the particles have this now twisty movement, sort of like a DNA sequence, I guess. But you can also notice that as the curve gets longer and longer, the particles are much, much faster. And that is because in the particle system, you, you see this lifetime. This is basically how long it will take for one particle to get from point zero of this curve to the end. So as the lifetime gets shorter, the particles will try to get all this distance in just 10 frames. So if you want it to be slower, just bump it up to something like 200 maybe, and then you have a slow flow of particles. If you want to make sure that the particles are always covering whole path, make, sh make also sure that the frame start is minus whatever lifetime you put in here. Because right now, if you go to the beginning, you can see that the particles are only getting to the half of our whole path because the lifetime is 200 and it started exist 100 frames before we started. So it only moved for 100 frames. I hope it makes sense. The bottom line is make sure that the frame start is minus whatever lifetime frames you put in here. And as you can see, you have the effect done. Now all there is to do is you can go into the material settings and just refine and adjust the shader itself. So you can like play with the noise texture values to make it maybe more fine then it looks more like a dust flowing or something. There's all kinds of things that you can adjust here. So just go crazy on it. And there is one catch though. As you can see, if I duplicate this emitter and put it somewhere away, the particles still try to flow in a path that's similar shape to this, but it's being offset. And that is because this curve that's driving the particles affect the whole world right now. If you go into the physics tab, you can see that there is a minimum distance number.
And that means that it will affect everything that's at least one unit of scale, which I believe is meter here. And that's not perfect, because if you want to create another trail with a different curve, then you don't want this one to affect it as well. Luckily, there is an easy fix for that. Simply check in use max, and then the maximum distance is gonna work as a threshold, up to which distance from the curve it will affect the spawned particles. So if you bring it all the way down, then it's not gonna affect the particles that are spawning right next to it. But as you go bigger and bigger, it covers more ground that it, that it attaches to the curve basically. And as you can see, if I go super high, then eventually it's gonna start affecting the other emitter as well. So just keep it in mind, if you want another trail, you can use the same particle emitter, just create another curve, bezier, move it to the middle of the other emitter, and also add it a force field type curve guide. And make sure that it also uses max, because otherwise, again, it's gonna affect the whole world. Then bump the maximum distance a little bit, just a few meters, and then as you edit the curve, you can create another trail that's independent of the first one. So that would be it for the tutorial. I know it was pretty short, but I think the effect is really, really great. And I hope you learned something. And again, if you want the file, then you can get it for free on my Gumroad, link in the description. And if you manage to do something with it, like create some scene using this effect, I would really love to see that. So let me know about it as well. Uh, you can tag me on Twitter or just send me a message. I'd really love to see what you create. And yeah, uh, that would be it. I will see you in the next one.